More than 14 years ago, on October 27th, 2008, I posted an, a short essay at the Nature Bats Last blog. So at GuyMcPherson.com, if you go to the search box and type in the way out of Weipe, you'll see two posts. The original that I'm going to read from and comment on today, and an update where I included a song and maybe a quote. I don't recall. So, The Way Out of Weipe, from October 27, 2008. People dread the story that begins back when I was a kid, and with good reason. You've been warned. I grew up in a backwoods burb of a few hundred people, known now as the first place the Corps of Discovery met the Nez Perce Indians, Weipe, Idaho was a timber town, back when timber was king. My childhood friends had fathers who worked in the woods, felling and bucking the trees that shot down the flumes into the nearby Clearwater River. I remember when the last log drive in the continental United States was shepherded down the river by hardy loggers with cock boots and black stagged off jeans held up by red suspenders. That was 1971, before the first oil crisis, before the Iran hostage crisis, before broad knowledge of many planetary crises, before globalization ruled our lives. Simpler times for sure. Just about everybody in Weipe was an FDR Democrat, dedicated to strong workers' rights and a decent social safety net. Not all the good old days were good, of course. Just a year before the last log drive, when I was 10 years old, I was walking the three blocks of school when I had an eerie feeling, or perhaps heard a noise, subconsciously. As I walked, I looked over my shoulder to see one of the town bullies pointing a rifle out his bedroom window, aimed at the base of my neck. If memory serves, he was 13 years old at the time. I kept walking, knowing enough to hide my fear. I thought so little of the incident, I didn't tell my parents for a couple of decades. It just never came up. Such were the consequences of being a bit weird. That's probably something of an understatement, as I look back, a bit weird, in a redneck town in the early 1970s. Far worse things happened to really odd people, including hippies, Jews, and people of color. There were no gays or lesbians, at least not in Weipe, not in full view, not at that time. What made me odd? Mostly, I suppose, I was odd because I was the principal's kid. As a result, I was one of the few youngsters in town who was often reminded that education might serve me better than a Hobbesian life in the woods. Mom and Dad were both educators, so I read voraciously. The meth labs hadn't moved in yet, and the country's cultural revolution never actually arrived in Weipe, so I played outside, and when it rained or snowed, I read books. It rained and snowed a lot. After a few visits to the town library, I clearly remember believing I would read all the books. Not merely the books in that tiny library, but all the books in the world. That's how naive I was when I was in my early teens or younger. This fantasy died when I visited the stacks at the University of Idaho library. The bittersweet memories return every time I catch the musty whiff of old texts. Still, to this day, when I walk into a library or a used bookstore and I catch that smell, you know the smell, the musty book smell, I think back to that time when I walked, when the elevator opened and I walked into the stacks at the University of Idaho and it hit me that I was never going to read all the books, not even all the books on that floor in that one library. Ugh, devastating. I graduated from crappy state universities, and I work, now worked, on campus at one that's the worst of the lot. And yet, despite poor educational institutions and serious swimming in culture's mainstream, I saw the world. How disappointing. Actually, the world is spectacular. It's the humans in the world I find disappointing, disturbing, and to quote Nietzsche from the title of a book, all too human. Overnight, all those FDR Democrats became Reagan Republicans, dedicated to growth for the sake of growth. They've traded in tomorrow for today by adopting the ideology of neoconservatism and the cancer cell. And they, along with the rest of Americans, continue to, to memorialize the world 
even as we destroy it. But seeing the world and experiencing the wonders in its books led to learning, and that has made me even more odd in the eyes of most people than when I was an odd 10-year-old. Now I'm not merely odd, I'm downright wacky, sheer terror to neocons and neoliberals everywhere. A little education goes a long way. Education was my ticket out of Weipe, but I should have stopped at knowing a little about forestry instead of a little about humans, ecology, economics, and limits to growth. I'd be a happier person, a neoconservative probably, rather than an informed and haunted liberal. I wouldn't know our culture is violent, diseased, broken, irredeemable. Ignorance is bliss. I need to get me some. It's interesting because I don't recommend it for anybody else. But for me, it seems like a good idea. At the age of extinction, only love remains. <laughs>